everyone, I'm Zarina and um, I'd like to uh, just acknowledge that I'm very grateful to be on the unceded traditional land of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh and Musqueam nations. Um, so I, I'm part of the weaving group uh, that used to meet at uh, Dunbar. Well, we still meet online now, but and we'll meet again <laughs> soon enough, I hope. Um, so today we're talking about accordions and how you can use all types of things you have in your house, how to recycle whatever you have in the house to make them, and also how to use kitchen supplies to make some of the, um, the uh, easy paints and inks. So I wanted to show you a couple of accordions and I have one hand, so be patient with me. Can you see, can everybody see the video, my workspace? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Give me a thumbs up. So this is just one of my simple accordion styles um, that I make where I just fold the paper zigzaggy like that. Um, and what I've done is I've just painted and usually I'll write in it too, but this is just one of my newest ones. Um, a lot of these inks are actually natural inks. Um, so these are just different pages and then I fill it up and usually I write in between as well. So I just wanted to show you one like that for an idea. And then the back of it is something like this. Oh, wow. oh yeah. I can also show you there <laughs> if that makes it easier. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. So, and then I'll, I'll write all over that. You know, I'll, I'll just write all here. In. But that's my accordion, the back of it. That's one of them. I just wanted to show you a couple of examples and that's just using um, watercolor paper because I do a lot of that. So this one, for example, is Christmas cards that I made experimenting years ago. I can't stand them. So what I did was I just join, I usually join Christmas cards. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you know, Christmas is coming. All those cards you don't want to keep, you can just make an accordion out of them, <laughs> right in them. <laughs> so there's an idea, there's no excuse, right? You have, you'll have supplies coming in the post soon. <laughs> um, another one is this is an accordion and Nancy later on is going to show you how to use a piece of paper to make one yourselves. But I, I, basic, I basically use these kinds of things. You know, grade two worksheets that never got used. I now use them because they're amazing. Pretty amazing at the back. Nice and blank. And then of course the front has got lines that nobody used. So I just use those pages. I'm not gonna waste that beautiful blank paper. So I made one of these and you kind of have to cut it in a certain way, fold it in a certain way. But if you can see in there, I, a lot of this is like my eco print um, examples that I don't use for anything, you know, just experiments. These are um, test cards I do in my dye pots when I'm testing uh, the color that comes out. And uh, I'm using acid-free paper. So instead of wasting that paper, I just cut it up and added it on these papers. So then I have these gorgeous pages. Very nice. Right, there you go. So uh, I think that was cochineal and all these are plants from the garden over the summer. But then there's another book I have, simple, doable at home. And then another one I wanted to show you was, um, this was in, I'm, I just made it for this. Um, and it'll probably go in one of my hand ins for, and don't forget everyone, you can hand in your stuff, your beautiful creations to, for our journal at the end. But I wanted to show you the colors on this. They're all natural colors. Um, that's oaks, you know, like as in, oops, where's my bunch of oaks? Acorns, I mean, these ones. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, these, uh, this is Coreopsis or Marigold, they're all mixed up. Um, this is Pokeberries, which is here. Hmm. Beautiful colors, Pokeberries, very poisonous, but amazing colors. Um, I've got some very light tea. I don't think you can see it there. Um, here's just some crushed leaves. Again, acorn. So, you know, beautiful, subtle, gorgeous colors, but all natural. And then what I like to do is these little boxes because I thought it's, you know, I have very little time um, and, you know, filling little boxes up one at a time, it just 
just makes it more doable for me. I don't get stressed out even writing a journal because that's the whole point. But yeah, then I do these kinds of drawings on there and I probably write in between the leaves, you know, tiny kind of writing. And um, what I also like to do is just some things that pop out in from magazines and um, books I read. If there's something that pops up, I love to just write it. Like here, here for example, it says, it will all make sense one day. And that kind of just gives me a thought, uh, uh, you know, a little direction in, into what I want to write, for example. Um, what do you want or just mood, um, head in the clouds. I sometimes have my head in the clouds. Um, <laughs> so we are stronger with every uh, with every struggle. Yes, I'm in a nemophilist, which is uh, a person who loves being in the forest. Yeah, so, and then time is a fickle thing. And I wrote time is a fickle thing. I'm not sure why. <laughs> because it's a big deal. We're actually talking about time in this, um, in, uh, well, fickle is not necessarily the right word, but I liked it anyway. Um, time is uh, the theme for this workshop today. And um, we wanted to kind of put it, uh, put it uh, into whatever we were doing. So if everybody could get a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen and just do a quick warming up exercise that I'd like to show you. Just draw a line in any way you want, one end to the other, like that, and put some little dots along the line. They don't have to be all equally spaced out. They can be very close or very far. And now join the dots, like so. From one end to another, just try to join the dots. And then you could go nuts and, you know, put another line joining from one of the other dots. Add some more dots. This is just a warm up. Thinking of time, this will, I'll, I'll mention this exercise a little later because I just, I'm going to try to let it mean something. Of course, it doesn't have to, but right. You could keep going. Do you see what I mean? Is everybody warmed up? <laughs> Very hot. Yeah. Here's another thing I wanted to show you. Sorry. And then Kaylin, for example, I don't know that type of shading. It's when you go like this. All right. And so. then you can, it's just like that. And that's what you can do to fill in the small oh. spaces. Okay, there you go. There's something I just learned now. So in that space, if you didn't want empty space, you could also fill it up. So moving on, you can finish up. You can finish that up later. I wanted to show you some inks that you could then use. So has everybody, has anybody here made inks before? No. Yes, you have? Uh, yes, I have uh, here some, like a couple that I made with uh, Mahonia berries and copper blue. Oh, that's right, Juliana, you have made them. I have seen yours. And I, ha I have a whole bunch in the back, but I only brought these two for today. Well, that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a very simple way of making inks. Um, you can basically use a lot of things in your garden. For example, do, uh, you guys have buddleias around, right? You know buddleia? The, yeah. uh, the purpley flowers, they give the most amazing yellow. It's like this honey, this color yellow. It's pretty stunning, even the dried stuff. So there's a lot of dried stuff in the gardens right now. So you could use that. Marigolds, you know, uh, marigolds give you the same the same orangey kind of thing. Um, you could use, I'm gonna show you some garden stuff as well as uh, some inks you can make from your vegetable waste. So pinks from avocados, different colors from the pits and a different from the skin as well. So, um, and amaranth gives you a beautiful color. I don't know if you can see this color. Um, onion skins, if you, two different ones. This will give you a completely different color, but I love I love the uh, orangey, rusty kind of beautiful um, color that you get from the onion peels. Um, and I'll show you that at the moment, in a, min in a minute. And of course the standard blueberries, right? Gorgeous colors from that. That's frozen. Frozen is better for berries because it breaks all the cell walls down and gives you a better color. All the cells are broken, so I love that color. Um, and then, of course, uh, I've got tons more here, but 
Of course, uh, ochre, if you find ochre on your walks, always nice to keep those as well. And then when I do make inks, I do put them in these shells and I let it dry in there so that if I wanted to use it, I just, you know, put the water in and just use it from there. It's kind of nice, except my dog really likes eating the shells, so I've got to be careful. But they're kind of uh, natural storage as well for the natural paints. I really like that. Um, I wanted to show you, oh, you saw the pokeberry, right? The color from the pokeberry? Mm-hmm. Stunning color. Little bit of, a little bit of vinegar is all you need to store that. You don't need to do anything else. And then um, you can use dyer's chamomile that you find in the gardens. Um, I've got these leaves as well. These are indigo leaves and they give a nice color, but these won't give me much because it's they're just too young, but still. And acorn ink. Can you see that color black in the light? That's just boiled down for a few hours. Um, but I will show you um, this, the fantastic cabbage, right? Who's used cabbages for ink before? Nancy, you have? So this color, I mean, this beautiful color will give you these shades. Ooh. You see that? So that's the natural state. That's adding a modifier. I've got a lemon, that's with lemon for pink. And that's, um, that's the uh, bicarb. But look at those colors. Just gorgeous. gorgeous from one, from, you know, the outside leaves of the cabbage. Marina, are those colors lasting from the coal and the berries? No, but if you don't, if you don't leave them in the sun, it's okay. I mean, over time it will fade because they call fugitive, they run away, basically, the, the color runs away. Um, but if you leave them in the sun, they're gonna fade like anything does, right? Leaving the right. sun, but in books, it'll last a little bit longer. Not forever. Not like, I think the, you know, the inks that last forever, things like gallnut and, you know, those ones you see in the old manuscripts and stuff, they've got iron in them. They last a very long time. So if you were cooking up onions, for example, you'd want to cook it over a low simmer for about a half an hour and then turn it down even long, even lower and go for another half an hour or so. so um, of course, the paper you use, remember, makes a difference too. Um, because if it's acid free paper, like the watercolor paper I'm using, it's not going to react. But if you use paper that, you know, any paper that has acids in it, then it's going to give you, it's going to change the pH again, which also gives you another look, right? But um, the onion, the onion is pretty amazing because you, everybody has onions and if you can just save your peels. What do you use? Can you use a red onion peel? Yes, you can. It'll give you like a purpley color. Yeah. But this is onions. And then what I did do before, um, because I didn't want to bring it in, but uh, what I did do before is add um, a rusty nail water that I'd made, rust, so ferric sulfate to the onions. And I'll show you the color it gives you. It's just with onions, you can, you know, even if you put, um, make a little container like this, a little glass container like this and halve the onion the liquid you make and then add some rusty nails in it. Look at the color difference. Jeez, it's almost black, isn't it? Yeah, it's black, exactly. So, you know, there you go. You've got your orangey black as well. That's just with a couple of nails in it, right? So the way I would save all this would be then to add some, um, some cloves. Just add like three or four cloves in a little bottle. Or if you have clove oil or wintergreen, eucalyptus oil, all of those oils help. But I prefer to add, I just add the cloves in because I've got loads of that. Cloves, um, it, it's an antifungal, so it won't, uh, like it won't let it mold so easily. Yeah, so that's two more colors. Just from your garbage, you know, your green garbage. And then of course you have your standard, you have your marigolds that you can also add. And marigolds you'd cook for like half an hour. Um, you, you know, any plant material you have, you don't want to use, you don't want to cook it too long because it's like vegetables, right? Overcooking vegetables will give you brown basically. So just take your time and just slow simmering and then keep testing to see the color you want and then turn it off. And of course, take all the plant material out through a sieve 
um, use a fine mesh or something, do it a couple of times and then save it. Um, stone pigments I had, but I mixed, I mixed indigo in this one, for example. And this is uh, this yellow ochre stone. I mixed it with some colors I got from um, like a pigment from England, but it's very, very nice. So just have to wet it a bit. See that? Yeah, that's a lovely. That's yeah, and that's indigo I grew. So it's kind of nice to have. Is this from with, your flowers? That's from my leaves. And then I mixed it with other stuff too. So it's blue. Wow. Beautiful, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. So yeah, and that's plants that anyone can grow. Oh, and this is tea. Look at that tea with the tea bag in it. You have tea. Do you just pour hot water in it? Uh, on I, just put, I did, but I, I also did for this ink. Uh, now I may, I've used three tea bags in half a cup of water and I just cooked it over slow. But look how beautifully it dries though. Yeah, lovely. Right? Sometimes you can sprinkle salt on your... Oh, on exactly, your, exactly. It, yeah. It, you know, it's yeah. really very pretty when it does that. Exactly. So, um, do you have anything um, that you're boiling or anything you can smash, like some leaves? I tried it with um, orange lilies. Oh, yeah. But uh, it's it's very watery. Oh, I'll just get and, uh, on. Then I have coffee, but I, there's coffee grinds in it, and I have beets. Oh. Be beets are good. Beets are really good, the beets. And you don't have to use the actual beets. You can use the outsides that you get rid of. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm yes, just exactly. using the beet, beet skin. Yeah. So, yeah, you can, all you have to do is take a mortar and pestle and just really smoosh them. I see. Really, you know, to get some of that ink. All I did is um, put hot water on the beet skin. Yeah. And it gives a pretty good color. Oh, good. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, look at this color already coming out of this. And then if you guys want to put, uh, you know, on your piece of, uh, turn the piece of paper around, turn it over, sorry, and just uh, draw some boxes, you can just paint. But if you don't have, you know, the, the vegetable stuff, you Maria? can use, yeah. I think, Julie, did you have a question? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I I have a few a few plants, like a few, I, like I've got some hyacinths and, um, these purple flowers and then I've got a couple of leaves and some coffee like you know Maxwell House and I just yeah I just so I was ready to do something with them. Oh fantastic you can just add a few grains on a plate and uh, use a spoon to really smoosh it with, uh, with a tablespoon or teaspoon of water and if I were you go a little less water and then add a little bit more as you go, because you don't want to just dilute it too much. Are you talking? Are you talking about the coffee? The coffee, for example, yes. Yeah. So, what about the flowers? What do I do with them? The highest, oh, oh, those, oh, those are lovely. Nasturtiums. Nasturtiums are gorgeous. You know, with nasturtiums, you could just hammer them. But do the same thing. I'll add a little bit of. Um, add a little bit of hot water tiny bit and just smush them with a spoon or, oh. a, or if you have nasturtiums are edible so you can use your motor and pestle i i usually have a motor and pestle just for my my dye material but if there are things like avocados which are edible things you know they're not poisonous i can use it but i try not to mix my dye materials uh, my dye uh, equipment with mm -hmm. the um, yeah right cool but you can okay. use a spoon to mush it up too. Yeah. Um, what about these little purple flowers? Do you know if they are? Oh, edible? absolutely. You, I don't know if they're edible. I don't know what. No, those are. You can use them for dye. You could try it. Just okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, I've got. Um, oops, where are they? Uh, I don't know if you can see, but can you see these? I saved a lot of these pansies because they give you a beautiful light. Um, green kind of aqua blueish kind of dye, but I'm probably going to use them on material instead. But I don't know if you can see these colors. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those, yeah. Are, and those are irises that I smushed up. I just nice. 
you know, stack them in uh, pieces of paper. And I love that those colors that come off the irises. But yeah, those um, fancies yeah. are very easy to do too. I just have a quick question. Um, all summer long, I've been putting uh, flowers and leaves and different things into the freezer. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Yeah. So, so in terms of like actually making dye with them, can I just take them one at a time and make like your methods or how do you do that? Um, if you're ready to use them, you could do that just a little bit at a time. I don't know what your project is. Well, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make paper that I can use for projects like you showing, you know, like your projects. Okay. Type thing. Okay. Make, so, yeah, making yeah. journals, you know, so paper. Yeah. So you're just putting them, yeah, just do a little bit at a time. That, that way you don't even, you don't have to waste it, right? Um, uh, some plants, of course, you can Google the plants too, but pokeberries, for example, you just need a bit of vinegar. What just, about these uh, leaves? Um, those would give you yellow, kind yellow? of a very light yellow if you smash them. Yeah, they don't, you know, the colors, there's a big science behind those leaves changing colors, right? Oh. Um, but these, for example, I don't know if you can see, these are dahlias. Those give you a gorgeous aqua bluish green as well. My goodness. I just saved those, dried a couple of them. But... Uh, are they dahlia flowers or leaves that you Those use are dahlia leaves? flowers. And what color did they start out? Uh, they were that, uh, I don't know if you can see, actually they were this color, the pokeberry color. Okay. How about rose petals? Oh yeah. Ro yes, rose petals are lovely. So if you have lots of roses, you could save it, uh, you, you know, you could cook it up and it'll go, yeah, like those, um, Jill. Yeah. You could go a very light pink, but then if you add lemon, it'll give you that color. Of see the rose that um, Jill has in her hand? It'll go back to that color. Wow. Julia yeah. has some samples too. Samples? Show us. Okay, I, I made uh, ink with rose petals and mm -hmm. um, got a, a different shades uh, by adding alum and yeah. by adding, uh, well, vinegar salt to one batch and the other batch alum and then uh, OxyClean. <laughs> yes, was... yes, you can use Oxy, you can use washing soda too. They so all the have... shades from Rose and um, oh, can I can I share with you my best green yet? This is yeah. from Wisteria. That is poisonous. So watch out because when I was cooking it, um, I inhaled some of the fumes by accident. And oh. I was outside and I felt really scratchy and sick. Oh no! But I read that um, it's not good. <laughs> so yeah. oh yeah. So with Wisteria, we made um, I made fibers once. Um, in Japan, they used to use Visteria to make uh, the kimonos. Oh, and I don't know if they still do, but Visteria fibers, we did cook it outside, yeah. It was a really beautiful green from Smokebush. Yeah, Smokebush is lovely, yeah. And Smokebush <laughs> gives you a beautiful green too, uh, yeah. an aqua blue even. Uh, avocado peeps give you an amazing pink and lilac kind of shades. Yeah. Uh, yellow uh, loose strife uh, gives gave me a beautiful yellow. Uh, well, blackberries, willow bark, and cochineal uh, made this beautiful velvety uh, burgundy. Yeah. Yeah, no, the only one I wanted to share with you was the mahonia bark because oh, um, that was an incredible yellow. It 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 has darkened a lot, but when you first paint with it, it's like intense yellow, like almost like turmeric. Uh, in alcohol base, but right now it has darkened a lot. This you was can see the dark. Yeah. I guess it's almost like this color, but now it has turned a little bit more. Uh, what is the lighter yellow? This is oh turmeric wood in alcohol base. Oh, yeah, you can go so crazy doing inks, right, with what you have in the garden and stuff. And, um, and there's still some flowers left, right? But Badlia, I have to say, stunning. I mean, you can get that gorgeous yellow. And then if you just add like a couple of rusty nails to the liquid, it'll turn a green. So you'll have yellow and you'll have green. You know what I mean? Like it's pretty amazing that you can get some colors out of it. Um, but you know, and if there's absolutely no flowers and you're not leaving the house and you've got these dried, dried up markers, you know, you could use these. I never threw, uh, in the beginning when my kids were younger, 
I didn't throw out those markers because I knew there was lots of ink in them. I'm just going to wash, hang on a minute, wash one of my brushes. Just add a bit of water and you'll still get color out of all dried up markers, right? So you can do that till all the color comes out and that color, the nib actually turns white. That's how much the boys did it when they were using all the dried up markers. So there's still loads of color in those. So use up those dried up markers. Crayola. Serena, yes. one, of, one of the things that I did a few years ago is we opened up the markers and took the little um, sponge thing that's inside yeah. that's filled with ink. And then we put it in isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, which you may not be able to get for those purposes anymore. And if you put lots of them in, it becomes what's called alcohol ink that you can buy quite expensively. But you can also create your own custom colors by combining different colors off the, off the inks together. Oh, I love that, Dawn. Thank you for sharing that. Juliana, thank you too. Beautiful, I love that different backgrounds and uh, different experiences, right? I never even thought of opening up the pens. I thought it would be too messy, but I could do that, couldn't I? The kids don't have to. I forgot to tell you that when you make the inks, you know, now I just showed you straight out of making the ink, the water with the plant material. But then if you add something like gum Arabic, which you might not have access to now, unless you wanna go online or go to the shops, which most of us don't want to, but everybody has some honey in the house. If you add honey to a little, a, a, oops, a dash of honey to those inks, it lets, it holds, it mixes the pigments better. It lets it flow on the paper better and it uh, lets it settle really nicely. So you can always add that. You, if you have maple syrup, you can add maple syrup to it. Um, on your walks, if you see an old cherry tree with uh, some cherry sap, just, you know, take a tiny bit, ask the tree, of course, Take a tiny bit and if you just, it's water soluble. So it's great um, for painting as well because it's one of those saps that's water soluble. Um, you could use that to bind, it's called a binder. And then of course, to change your inks, you've got vinegar, you've got bicarb, uh, you've got oxy like Juliana mentioned, you've got washing soda, all these things in your, you know, um, uh, yeah, baking soda, you've got lemons, you've got all these things in your kitchen. So you can definitely use those and change the color, you know, tones and colors and shades. But I wanted to talk about today's theme, of course, time. That's what we were talking about. <laughs> we were talking about what time is to you. And while I'm talking, you can also do your doodling thing because that's really, um, you know, what do you think of when you think of time? Do you think of a place like for me, um, it, you know, is it a place in your past? Uh, because time is also, you can also think of the future. And you know, last last um, session we talked about uh, imperfect lines. Do you remember that? Some of you who were there, um, and and we also talked about time as a metaphor for uh, and it being a line. It's always like shown as a line, as a timeline. So that little uh, warming up experiment we did, uh, sorry, drawing we just did, you know, that's a line, and I put dots. Do you mark your time with events? special events and, you know, what about the space? What makes it important? Like when you write, do your journals, if you, you know, and I'd love for everybody to hand in something, even if it's something small, would be lovely to have it in the end for, the, for our end project. But for example, for me, um, I, when I think of time, it's uh, more like, you know, it's when I remember things. For example, how I spend my time on Acadia Beach, for example, to hang out there quite a bit. I put things in my pocket, you know, feathers, rusty nails, rocks, pebbles, stones. When I bring it home, it's memories I've created. And then I empty it out. I think of that calm, peaceful time on the beach with all this, you know, what others would see as junk in my pocket, but that was really nice for me. So then I then take my journal and maybe I try to attempt to draw them. <laughs> this is my expression, right? It can be it's yes. your own way of expressing yourself. So, um, so and you know, over the so that's that's specific time. But in the long term, you know, what what has the last months meant to you? And I think Nancy can talk a little bit more about that uh, when she's giving giving us the uh, next activity to do. Um, are you ready, Nancy?